Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk about things like love, spirituality, law of attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. I'm an intuitive reader, a manifesting coach, a Reiki practitioner, and a life path guide and mentor here to help you along your awakening journey. And we are here for our weekly energy reading. It is um, the first week in September. OMG, where did the summer go? Um, and for those of you in other countries, um, whatever season it is, we are shifting and let's see what the energy is for this coming season slash week. So this reading will kind of be like a seasonal reading. We're going to see what's going to happen in the fall, but also specifically this week. So I brought my Stephen Farmer Spirit Animal deck or deck <laughs> book, which I've been liking using lately. So let's call in our guides, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, please open sacred space. Please only allow the highest and whitest light messages to come through. Bless me, bless my cards, bless my viewers. Thank you so much for always giving us messages that we need and when we need them. We love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see what Stephen's got for us. Stephen Farmer. All right, let's get a card for... Uh, a page for the season, an animal for the season. What is the animal for this fall season? The giraffe. Okay. And here is a screenshot. You guys want to screenshot it? Keep your head up, have faith, and trust your gut regarding the situation you're dealing with at the present. You'll have, you'll have to reach a bit, but you will achieve your goal. Keep your eye on the possibilities that are just on the horizon. It's better to not act too hastily in this situation. Spend some social time with friends and family. Make it a point to be a better listener and to be clearer in your communication in both professional and personal relationships. Okay, I like this. This is saying whatever you've been trying to manifest or call in, in the fall season, it's saying you're doing great. Let's just maybe go out and have some fun and let's not grip too hard on, on the journey. And it's funny, this morning when I woke up, um, after I did my morning routine and then I grabbed my phone and I always try to respond to any comments from you all. Um, for those of you that live in other countries where there's a time difference, you know, five hours might have gone by or six hours. And I'm like, oh, I want to get to them before my day gets started, before it's like days that go by that I can't respond. So I try to respond to all the new comments in my morning hours. And one of the comments was, asking about fear and doubt on the journey. And I told her, I was like, listen, I was like, sometimes we have to get off the journey for a day and go live life and go have fun. And then that's when things start to pick up the pace again. But when we are waking up every day and thinking about something that's outside of us, something that we don't have, we're actually creating more of that. So this message, the giraffe for the fall season is saying, don't be so fixated on your manifestations this season, have fun, go out grab some pumpkins, do some pumpkin painting, go to a hayride, do all of those things that maybe if your soul just, I just got a message. If our souls just jumped into these bodies right now and we were like, oh my gosh, what are pumpkins? What is a hayride? What are these things that we can do in these bodies that are fun and they smell good and they taste good? Apple cider donuts, all these yummy things. So spend the fall season nurturing your five senses and nurturing your sixth sense, which is your intuition, following that too. Okay, now let's get a card, an animal <laughs> for this week. What about this week, Spirit? What do we need to hear? And I just heard go to the front of the book. Okay, the B. It's time to get organized and get to work on that idea that you want to implement and develop. Approach your projects and commitment diligence, and dedication, and you'll succeed beyond your wildest expectations. Involve several, several others in a cooperative life-affirming affirm, venture. And anytime I stutter on my words, you guys know that means something. My guides are saying, pay attention. So let me read that again. Involve several, several others in a cooperative and life-affirming venture, one in which everyone who participates will benefit, and if possible, one that involves the entire community. This is magical. Okay, so what idea or clever um, breakthrough have you been having that you've been kind of procrastinating on? Maybe it's to create a course for somebody. Maybe it's to start a retreat. Maybe it's to um, start writing that book. I did a session with a lovely woman yesterday 
and she's a teacher and she wants to write children's books with her husband and he's going to illustrate them. And um, she just was feeling like she needs the energy to start. But with teaching, it's really hard and I can relate. It's really hard to do anything after school because you're just so drained. So um, I was kind of guiding her to say like, hey, like find a self-care routine, maybe think about leaving your job if that's really what she wanted because she really doesn't want to be teaching anymore. So if this is you, if you are at a job that's kind of like pulling all of your energy just to do the job, I need you to reevaluate reevaluate your life and say, what would be better for me? Because my client last night, she didn't understand manifestation. She didn't she didn't really believe in the universe. She doesn't know what she believes in. So I was introducing her to this idea that, okay, when you get clear on what you don't want, and then you ask for what you do want, and then you kind of wait for the breadcrumbs. You wait for the universe to bring it to you. So this is your reminder. The B says that it says, get to work on the thing that you want, but maybe you don't even know what you want. Somebody out there might not know. So Think about whatever you're obsessed with, whatever you love to watch or do, that's normally something that's inside of you that you're meant to bring to the world. So always, always remember that. And this week, get to work. The beast is saying it's time to be a bumblebee. Start bringing home the honey. <laughs> okay, let's do some uh, angel wisdom tarot. Quick little break for my drink. How beautiful is the sun? I'm trying to get this reading in before the lawn guys come and uh, the leaf blower behind me starts going. All right, Spirit, what do we need to hear this week? And if that does happen, I'll pause the video and I'll wait until they're done and then I'll come back out because I don't want to cut the video short. We have a strength card. Hey, we have three. Ooh, strength, queen of wands, and the four of swords. This is you finding your answers. It says insights that come from meditation, the need to rest or take a vacation, allow yourself more time before making a decision, mental exhaustion, get more sleep. And we have the strength card. It says personal power and assertiveness portrayed with kindness, compassion that brings about forgiveness, realizing that you're stronger than you knew. See, I'm wearing the king, the crown. I love it. And then we have the queen. It says, brilliant, talented, independent, controlling. There's nothing you can't do. Believe in yourself. Never underestimate your ability to make your dreams come true. The need for balance between career and personal life. So this kind of is similar to the manifesting journey. When you hop on the journey and you're like, on it full speed ahead, you got to pull off and just go have fun. That's balancing your career and your personal life, having fun, but also co-creating. And I, I just got a message for somebody out there. Anytime you're stuck in the head, if you're stuck in the mind and you're in ego and ego will feel like, it'll feel like worry. It'll feel like doubt. It'll feel like, I don't know how to fix this problem. I need a solution right now. And you're pacing and you're just obsessively thinking and thinking and thinking. You're in the mind. And the way we get out of the mind is we use our throat chakra because we wanna drop from here down into our heart. So when we use our throat chakra, we're taking a deep breath in and you're letting it out <laughs> and you're using that throat chakra. You guys are the first ones I'm talking to this morning. So my voice is a little raspy, excuse me. <laughs> um, but you're let, like, do you see how that affected my, my um, my voice box, it made it like, it made change happen. So that means energy is actually moving between my heart and my head, right? And we want the energy to move because we wanna be able to come back down into our body and into our heart. And a lot of times they say the throat is the chimney to the heart and we need to clear that chimney. And the only way to clear it is by laughter is by breathing. And if you're not consciously taking these steps, ah, doesn't it just feel lighter when you hear me do that? So please, if you're watching, I want you to do what I just did right now. Maybe do it three times and then see how you feel. Your intuition, that sixth sense, it drops in so fast and you just feel like you're back in your body and you feel 
like you're back appreciating life and you're trusting again and you're like I'm back I'm not in that uh, my one teacher she calls it a barking dog your mind and your ego you're not the barking dog has stopped barking you you put it to sleep you did something to get it to shut up <laughs> but you love the dog so you don't want to be mean to it because you need it it protects you but when it's barking incessantly we got to put it to sleep. And the way we put it to sleep is through laughter and through breathing. So when you're overworked, that B card, you got to get out and play. You got to get out and rest. And the four of swords is also the same thing is go into a meditation and find your peace. And then the queen of wands, she has a black cat on her lap. I don't know if you guys caught that. Um, and she has this protection. Black usually represents prote protection in the spirit world. So she's protected by this cat, but she's very independent because cats are also super, super independent. They can kind of fend for themselves. And when you reach the queen of wands, she's balanced in her career. She's balanced in her relationship. She's balanced in her abundance. She is just feeling like overall, she's super, super, um grounded and she's also like really really passionate like the wands kind of represent you know what <laughs> somebody the male body part getting excited <laughs> so the king of wands is usually like oh man he's got it bad for you queen of wands same thing it's that energy of just she's so passionate when she knows what she wants she goes after it and she knows that she can do it on her own with spirit that cat by her side and then the strength just represents all of that. So somebody out there to wrap these three cards up, go into meditation, drop out of the mind and back into the heart. Know that you have the strength to endure whatever you've just been through. This week, you're now getting the energy to generate moving forward with something that you're passionate about. You don't think you can, somebody doesn't think they can do something, but you can. If you don't think you can start that book, you don't think you can start that course or that thing, yes, you can. Your, your steps will be brought to you. So just rest into a meditation and ask, say, drop me into my heart, drop me into my body spirit, and just give me the breadcrumbs in the next two weeks of what to do next. And sometimes that'll come in, like my client last night, she wants to write the children's books. And I unconsciously, you know, channeling messages said, well, maybe in October you'll get brought a writing class. And she was just like, I think I need that. She goes, I feel a little rusty. So sometimes the breadcrumbs come like two or three months out. So you have to be patient on this journey. Now we're going to use the ever unfolding heart. This is the first deck that I created. Everything is available on my website, which is linked below. This one popped up. We're gonna take it, the gazelle. Observe your surroundings. What or who is draining your energy? Ooh, that's a good one. Take inventory and then take fast action to pull your energy back. So the gazelles are fast, obviously. Gazelles are also needing to slow down to take a look at, all right, what's happening in my life? What do I need to pull away from? What do I need to go towards? Um, and when you're wanting to start a project like a book or a course or um, like planning a retreat or something, I'm actually working a, treat, a retreat in September at the beach. It's going to be amazing. It's like a freedom retreat. You get four days and you can yoga, you can paddleboard. Um, I'm going to be doing readings on Saturday and it's kind of like you get to schedule your own thing, but you're with the group doing it all together. Like with certain people, you can go, two people can go like stand up paddle boarding. But anyway, when you're, the idea that the woman had when she was creating this retreat, she went into solitude and she just allowed herself to get, a, get away from all the distractions. You know, what is, what is, how can I be in this energy when I'm wanting to plan something for myself? When I'm wanting to write this book, you know, is my family constantly texting me and asking me to do things for them? Is that a distraction? You're allowed to say no. You can choose yourself because your mission work is so much more important than doing errands for people who maybe could find other people to do those errands. Does that make sense? Fabulous. And I just saw clear the clutter at the bottom of the deck. Your dream job is on the way. Keep feeling good. The more you feel good, the quicker it arrives. Get excited. It's almost here. This is perfect confirmation. 
I'm really happy for some of you because I know what it feels like to be in alignment in my life and to be doing what I love and to finally be in the flow and not constantly be waking up going, I feel like I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be here. I don't know how I'm going to make enough money. I am completely in the car driving on cruise control at this point and it feels good. And now I'm making like minor adjustments as I go. I just started filming subliminals and it feels really good. I'm going to do more meditations. So it's kind of like just the fine tuning and somebody out there, you're about to get into that new job. You're about to be in, in cruise control. But the first few steps are a little like, I don't know, does this feel good? Can I trust this? And you can, you are stronger than you think. And if you guys need help when you're switching careers or you're wanting to moonlight and do your passion work at night, please message me and we can do a reading. Sometimes just one reading is enough to get people going, to get that juice going. I can sometimes mirror back to you where your block is or why you feel like you just can't start the project. Um, and sometimes the cards bring through messages that we both weren't expecting, which is really magical and fun. So if you need that, feel free to book a session with me. My email is mindfulheartgirl at gmail.com, which is down below as well. Okay, woo, we have the zebra and the phoenix, heck yes. Okay, the zebra is all about um, wear your stripes proudly, be so brave, be who you are, be all of you, don't hide yourself. Um, but it's also a card of travel. Like you're going on this adventure, you're doing something new and you're using your third eye. Look at the rainbow. Um, and that's triangle. So it's a, it's an air sign. So this could be somebody who's an air sign. Um, this message could be for them, but I feel like I don't know. I feel like the zebra is telling me something else. It'll come to me. I just heard narrow your focus. Use your third eye. When you're going on this journey, you're going to have to use your third eye. You're going to have to go into meditation and visualize. Like when I say use your third eye, sorry if I did not describe it. <laughs> My clients know when I say this. Using your third eye is basically... Um, you're envisioning what you want your life to look like. You're envisioning and literally making a decision saying, I want this. And if this brings me joy, then I'm going to go to bed every single night using my third eye and closing my eyes and looking from the center, center in my mind's eye and seeing myself doing the thing, seeing myself in the end result. So say um, my one client, she's a screenwriter and she's actually a friend, a bestie. And we were on the phone last night and we were, she was asking me, like, sometimes I think I have a little bit of fear or doubt because I think, what if this is God's, not God's plan for me? And I said, actually, I was like, I think if anything brings you joy, that is God's plan for you. And we just commit to it full speed ahead. And maybe God and the universe wants us to learn that. It wants us to know that if this is what you want, go for it. Both feet in, dive in and commit to every single night. You're going to imagine yourself so she's going to imagine her, her screenplay out in the world. It's already at, as a movie. She already has the actors picked and the movie is already out. So she's going to the way, way end result. And she's going to imagine herself hugging the actress because the movie is so successful. And then the universe takes care of all the logistics to get her to that point. And that's full commitment. So if you are wanting to write a book, you're going to imagine getting emails of people thanking you because your book changed their life. You always want to live from the end and you're going to use your third eye every night before bed and you're going to see this happening. Okay. And then we have the Phoenix. The Phoenix is all about rising through those ashes and you're kind of like, you've been put through the fire. You're going through a transformation. It's kind of like a tower moment and you're becoming brand new. And it could be something small, like changing a habit. It could be leaving a job. It could be Moonlighting, like I said, like adding something new into your life that completely changes your energetic makeup of how you spend your day. So the Phoenix is saying, be a badass, rise from the tough time that you've been through. And I just heard somebody's going to be using that tough time to fuel their mission, just like me. The loss of my daughter, if you guys are not aware, if you're new to my channel, like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> but I unfortunately, but fortunately, uh, my daughter was born with a muscle dis disorder in 2012, and at six weeks old, um, she passed away. And 
that fueled my mission. It took me a really long time to get to the point to want to do a mission at that point. I was so depressed, but now she's my why. And we're actually going to finish off this reading with her deck. It's called Micah Magic. Um, but sometimes our pain and our becomes our purpose. You know, what we've been through, we're supposed to help other people go through. So in the beginning, when I first started doing readings, guess who I attracted? I attracted all moms who had lost a child. The universe just kept bringing me them. It was so cool. And now it's more like I attract all different kinds of people on the spiritual journey. Okay, let's get, we got two. Yeah, an ending to a new beginning. That's the Phoenix. You're becoming brand new. <laughs> Somebody needs to take a vacation. Frog spirit is saying, take a vacation. We got the B card, which also means take a vacation or the B uh, page. And then there was somewhere else. Oh yeah, the four of swords says, get more sleep, take a vacation. So somebody needs to take a break and maybe that's when you'll get the energy to start the project. Let's get two more and then we'll finish out. Two more. Okay, <laughs> we have the gazelle again. We have pause and watch a sunset or a sunrise. It's time to create, get started on that project and your angels are asking you to use them. So to end this reading, you're gonna start whatever you're needing to start this week. You're gonna take some rest, maybe get the ideas if you don't know what it is that you wanna start. You're gonna rest, take a vacation and figure out, okay, let me drop into my heart take a deep breath, go play a little bit and the ideas will drop in. And then it's your job to take action when it feels right and ask your angels to use them. You can use them. You can say angels and guides, please change me into a person who can take action tomorrow, not today, but tomorrow. I do it all the time. And then I wake up with so much motivation. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> all right, lovies. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in our midweek reading. I'm sending you so much love, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. And I'll Talk to you soon. Peace out.